virtually real. As the popularity of online video games continues to grow, all eyes are on the virtual economies that are emerging around them. Article by Cameron Cooper The financial might of virtual worlds has been growing in leaps and bounds. Consider The Sandbox, a community-driven gaming platform that allows players to create and monetize in-game assets and experiences using blockchain. The platform's first in-game sale of digital property tokens known as LANs was held in December 2019. The first release of the deliberately scarce real estate sold out in the first four hours of the planned 15-day event. Subsequent LANs releases have proven equally popular, netting the game's owner, Anamoka Brands, more than $7 million, and that's before the game had even launched. Every day, millions of people around the world experience virtual worlds, and the ways in which they interact with these worlds and other players can often take unexpected turns. For example, global COVID-19 lockdowns have steered Nintendo's best-selling game Animal Crossing players spending real-world money to buy outfits in their in-game avatars. Other popular games such as Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roblox became social networks for millions of active users each month. Timu Toko, co-founder and CEO of Estonian-based Wolf 3D, which creates in-game avatars, says that just as previous generations hung out in shopping malls, parks, and basketball courts to catch up with their friends, they now use games as social platforms where they can interact with and compete against each other. He says, that's a very natural way to form friendships, and that's how it works in games. Virtual resources inside games increasingly present astute investors with opportunities to make serious real-world cash. In a report titled The Virtual Economy, La Atela, a subsidiary of French bank PNB Paribas, notes that modern video games offer new ways of making cash and provide new and real job opportunities. Potentially significant paydays are available to those who become professional esports players, for example, or digital farmers. In 2005, former actor John Jacobs famously remortgaged his real world home to buy Club Never Die in the Entropia Universe game for 100,000 US dollars. Five years later, and on the back of some virtual decorating, he sold Club Never Die for US$635,000. Dr. Kim Barker, a senior lecturer in the Open University Law School in the UK, says virtual resources can have real-world value depending on the circumstances. She says, If we're talking about virtual currencies, then Bitcoin is the prime example of virtual resources having significant real-world value. Equally, if we're talking about items sourced or developed in online games through completing challenges and mission-type activities, those too have value, not just in terms of in-game value, given the time, effort and skills involved, but also in the terms of their tradability and their potential value in in-game marketplaces, where they can be sold for either real currency or other virtual assets. Barker says users become very attached to their game accounts, characters, items and skills, and they often devote significant time and effort to gaming activities. She says... So it's understandable that there are notions of financial value attached to them. Technology developments and ever-improving augmented and virtual reality experiences are likely to add further sophistication and investment potential to the market, Barker adds. Dr. Michaela McDonald's fascination with virtual worlds and economies began 15 years ago, when she wrote a university essay on virtual property. This was around the time when Second Life, a world where avatars could travel, socialize, and trade, first entered into the public conscious. Now an expert on video game law at Queen Mary University in the UK, McDonald says the interactive entertainment industry has come to dominate the creative sector. The video game industry is most successful of all the creative industries and generates more profit than music and the film industry put together. McDonald says the video game industry is the most successful of all the creative industries and generates more profit than music and the film industry put together, McDonald says. For instance, the August 2020 release of Fall Guys, a whimsical battle between jelly bean like creatures, reaped 185 million US dollars, making it the highest earning launch of any computer game to date. In the virtual economy space, Battle Royale game Fortnite 
is the benchmark. Having generated a record 1.2 billion US dollars in revenue in its first 10 months after launching in 2017, with V-Bucks, the virtual currency, being used by players to buy avatar skins, gear, emojis, and other benefits, the game has become a cultural and financial phenomenon. Timu Toke says that, as a gaming developer, he is always conscious of contributing to virtual economies through his work. Our goal is to build an economy around avatars, he says. You have one avatar you love, and you can put in many different virtual experiences and then grow an economy around avatars. Trade in virtual assets has long been a legal grey zone. Many software companies' license agreements spell out that virtual property has no real-world value and that players have no legal claim to virtual property. However, this doesn't seem to deter the brisk and mostly bootleg trade in virtual items on online sites such as eBay and PlayerUp, all for real-world money. Toke says, Change is needed, but is slow in coming because the big gaming companies want to own and control all aspects of intellectual property. He says, it's a big mind shift for them to start opening it up, and heavy gamers really don't care about those things that much. They just want to play. With digital game spending projected to hit $165 billion in 2021, according to Superdata, the major technology companies behind the games are trying to protect their online turf. Rather than affording users a chance to sell virtual items or prosper in virtual economies through in-game trades, developers are seeking to control the space. She says, Players often engage with video games having little to no awareness or understanding of the contractual arrangements to which they have agreed. McDonald notes that in late 2019, Fortnite famously shut down for two days during a Black Hole event in which the world's most popular battle royale game introduced a new chapter and location for users to explore. No one could access their accounts, and players realize their assumptions about owning skins, virtual currency, and other in-game items were misplaced. When you acquire virtual items by paying money or winning them in the game, you do not have property rights, despite any legitimate expectations, McDonald says. The only right players have is the right to access and use the item within the limitations set up by the end user license agreement. Barker says that whether players should have more legal rights is a complex question. Legally, the license agreements dictate ownership, which is more often than not tied up in intellectual property issues. She adds that click wrap contracts, a type used widely with software licenses and online transactions in which a user must agree to terms and conditions prior to using the product or service, has a history of being binding. So, by accepting the license agreement or starting the game, Users are bound, she says. Digital assets are not treated the same way as physical property in most jurisdictions around the world. Depending on the type of assets in question, they may be treated as software, data, a collection of protectable components such as graphics, audiovisual works, or graphical user interfaces, or complex digital products. An intricate matrix of intellectual property rights will establish the default rules of ownership, while contracts may facilitate access and use of those assets. Purchasing a digital product such as an online video game translates to purchasing a limited license to access and use the game. It is not a transfer of ownership to the particular copy of the game. McDonald asks, if a customer pays for using a digital product, an ebook or a video game for example, does this qualify as a sale or service? McDonald advocates for a public discourse on the techno-moral values that society would like to institutionalize through laws, regulations, and public policies.